Hello students, welcome to another lecture. In this lecture, we're going to discuss cell energy balances and the temperature distributions in solids and laminar flow, okay? This is uh, pertaining to chapter 10, okay? So earlier we also discussed cell momentum balances, right? Uh, samely, same, we, we are going to discuss the cell energy balances, okay? So the cell energy balances have the following form. So, and also, as I told you earlier, we're doing cell balances for momentum or energy balance for steady state, okay? Time independent. When the system has already achieved the equilibrium or the steady state, then only this balance is you know, applicable, okay? So the form is, so we have rate of energy transport, rate of energy in, okay, in by convective transport. Okay, so you know uh, the heat energy can be transferred by three modes, right? So one is conduction, that is molecular transport, another is convective transport, and the third is radiation. We'll not consider the radiation here, okay? So we'll mainly deal with molecular transport and the convective transport, okay? So in rate of energy in minus rate of energy out by convective transport, okay? So if there is a, some flow of fluid is there, then only there will be convective transport. That means if there is a velocity of the fluid, then only there will be convective transport. If the, the velocity is zero, there will be no convective transport, okay? If velocity is zero, so there will be no convective transport. So you can ignore this, this two if the velocity is zero, okay? Then plus rate of energy in minus rate of energy out by molecular transport, that is by conduction, okay? So this term will be there in most cases. And rate of the work done on the system by molecular transport, Rate of the work done by the system by molecular transport, these two are fairly used. So we'll discuss some examples. So this, this is not considered in that system. Similarly, the, this, is, this convection is not considered. Okay, rate of work done on the system by external forces. As in momentum balances, we consider gravitation, right? Or centrifugal force. So this part, is also missing in the most of the cases. Only this term will be there, rate of energy production, okay? So for simplicity, this will be your cell energy balance form, okay? Rate of energy in minus rate of energy out by molecular transport plus rate of energy production, okay? Or energy generation, okay? That is this form, okay? So remember this. Okay, so based on this uh, general balance, we're going to solve some problems, okay? And as we discuss some of the boundary conditions in momentum cell balances, similarly here also we'll have boundary conditions. Let's, uh, first one is a, the temperature may be specified at surface. Suppose I have a plate, and at this surface, let's say my coordinate system is this X and Y. So let's say this separation is like some delta. So I can say at Y is equal to delta, T is given as, suppose T naught, okay? So this is some kind of boundary condition. So at this specific surface, the boundary, uh, the value is specified, okay? Secondly, the heat flux normal to the surface may be given, okay? So suppose this is, you know that fin, right? You have studied the fins in the heat transfer. So let's say this is the insulated boundary, okay? The heat cannot flow in this direction. So it can, you can say that at, let's say this is X direction. This is the origin. So you can say X equal to zero, the flux is 
zero. Okay. So there is no flow in this direction. Okay. Or you can say that the dt by dx is zero, right? From Fourier's law, because q is nothing but minus k dt by dx. So this is can also be specified. So this is the second boundary condition. And third, the interfaces at interfaces, the continuity of temperature and of the heat flux normal to the interface are required. Suppose uh, we have a composite, right? So let's say this is block one, one, and let's say this is block two, right? So uh, this is the interface. So here you can say, uh, in general, the for if you solve uh, composite wall problems, so it is given that the flux is same, right? So flux is constant here. So let's say this is Q1, flux in the block one and the flux is uh, Q2 at block two. So this Q1 equal to Q2 at this interface. This is also boundary condition. Okay, and lastly we have, let's say this is the solid, right? And we have a fluid over here. So let's say air. So definitely if this surface is hot, then the surface will be cooled by air, right? Moving air. So you know Newton's law of cooling, right? Q is equal to H T minus T B. So T naught is the surface temperature here. And T B is the temperature of the air. That is bulk fluid temperature. Okay, this is also called Newton's law of cooling. This can be also specified. So you can use as a boundary condition at here. Okay. And H is definitely the heat transfer coefficient whose units are what per meter square per Kelvin. Okay. Okay, let's solve a problem. Then you will get a clear idea how to solve problems using uh, energy cell balances, okay? So first understand the problem. So you have a wire, right? You have a wire of cylindrical, definitely wire is in the form of cylinder only, okay? So what is happening is current is flowing through the wire, okay? Current is flowing through the wire. Okay. So you're supposed to find the uh, flux profile Q and the temperature distribution inside the wire. So how the temperature is changing? What is the profile here? Okay, how the temperature is changing with the radius? Okay, how the flux is changing with the radius? You have to find out. You can also be asked to found, find uh, the average temperature, okay, and so on. So Okay, this is, so the current is flowing through a wire of some metal of some conductivity that is given, okay? And it is given that the, the, definitely, you know, Joule heating, right? Joule heating effect, Joule's heating effect, okay? Because the current is flowing through a wire, heat will be generated, okay? So heat, you know, it is I square RT, right? I is current, R is the resistance of the wire, the T is the time, and H is the heat. So this is, the unit is Joule, okay? So definitely the heat is being produced inside the wire. So this is the problem. So how to solve it? So you can, follow this, this uh, cell balance equation for energy. So in the problem, as I told you, there is no, no fluid motion, okay, V is zero. So we'll not have the, this convective part. So this convective part will be zero, okay? Only this will be there because current is flowing, there will be molecules or atoms in motion, so that will transfer the heat, right? 
So only through a molecular motion. Again, there is no work done on and by the system, and there is no external force doing work on the system. Okay, but there is a rate of energy production because of the heating effect of Joule. Okay, so only this three term will be there. Okay, so how to solve it? <clears throat> so as in momentum cell balances, we first first took a cell, right? A thin cell. So so we have this solid wire, right? This is cylinder. Okay, so we have to take a thin cell, right, of some small thickness. So since this is a cylinder, the best way to take is a thin cell, right, of the DR thickness. So I will take a thin cell of this thickness, delta R, right? Suppose this is the radius and the thickness is delta R, right? Okay, and the length of the wire is definitely given. Okay, now I have to do balance, okay, in this thin cell, okay. Now, see the wire is, uh, because of the heating, the wire will be at certain temperature, right? At the center, it will be highest, and this is air, right? So it will have some lower temperature, or the surface is at some, you know, low temperature so heat will flow in this direction in radial direction not in this direction okay so heat will flow in this direction the so flux will be in this direction okay so we'll have terms like qr right so as i told you q is a generally a vector right q r q z direction since this is a cylinder so and q theta direction okay so since the heat is flowing in this radial direction, only this term will be there, QR. Then the rest term will not be there. Okay, so we do a moment of cell balance, taking this QR into account. Okay, so if you see here, so this is the same cell balance. So Flux is flowing in this direction, right? At surface R is equal to R, heat in by conduction, right? That is molecular transport at R and minus out, right? So QR at R plus delta R, this is the thickness is delta R. So heat is flowing out of the thin cell we have assumed. So right, right? So in minus out is done. Okay. So this is the small radius r variable r we have taken. At this point, energy is going in due to conduction, right? At this point, energy is going out by conduction. Okay. And this capital R is the actual radius of radius of the wire. Okay. So if you Check this. Okay, I will delete this first, clear up. Okay, so, so this term I told you there is no fluid motion, zero, zero. Only this will be there. Okay, this will be zero, this will be zero, this will be zero, and this will be there, right? So, rate of energy in by molecular transfer, what is that? So that will be Q R heat flux in the R direction at surface R. That this is in, right? And out in minus out, right? So energy is going out at the surface R plus delta R, right? Okay. And plus energy generation, right? What is the energy energy generation? So because of the heating effect. So what is given in this problem? It is given that energy generation is this. Source of energy, electrical energy, SC, is I square by thermal conductivity, right? So I is nothing but it is given here. I is current density. This is I is current density. 
के इज थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी यस नो नो दिस इज इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी दिस इज इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी ओके सो दिस इज द एनर्जी टर्म दिस इज पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम ओके सो दिस इज इज अट सोर्स रिजल्टिंग फॉर इलेक्ट्रिकल दिस ओके इट इज पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम सो one more thing so this uh, cell energy balance you are doing is the if you see rate of energy in right so it is nothing but joule per second okay rate of energy production should also be in joule per second we are doing in terms of joule per second okay so since qr is this is nothing but flux right what is flux so joule per meter square per second right but we need only joule per second because we are doing the energy cell balance all cell energy balance so you have to multiply with the area right so what is the area of that thin cell you are taking so that is a curved surface right so 2 pi r because we are taken radius r 2 pi r and the length l okay this is the curved surface and what about uh, this surface area at r plus delta r that is nothing but 2 pi r plus delta r because now radius have a change uh, little bit that is delta r so that is this one right as assume earlier we generally take r plus delta r approximately equal because delta r is very small so we can approximately take r Okay, this will simplify our problem. So you can safely assume this as two pi r l two pi r l. Okay. Now, energy production rate. Okay, so it was given as I square by thermal conductivity K E. Okay, so this is per unit volume. So you have to multiply with volume to. So this is ju uh, energy production per unit volume second, right? Rate of energy, uh, rate of energy production per unit volume. So you have to multiply with volume. Okay. So what is the volume of this thin cell? So first take the two pi r l. This is the curved surface of the inner this one. Okay, into delta R that will give you the volume of the thin cell, right? So you just have to multiply into SC. Okay, so you will get the n equal to zero. So this is the cell energy balance for this for this problem. Okay, so if you see here, so rate of heat in across this cylindrical surface at R, right? So that is. 2 pi r l area into the flux in the direction of r q r at the surface r okay so this is done this is in and out rate of heat out across the cylindrical surface at r plus delta r so this is q r at r plus delta r and you have taken approximation r plus delta r s r because delta r is Very, very very less than zero or yeah small so you can safely assume this so this is out so in minus out is done and rate of thermal energy production because of the joule heating effect okay so that is the volume into the source of generation so source of generation unit has joule per meter cube dot second since we are doing balance in the form of joule per second so You have to multiply with volume. So volume of the thin shell was two pi r two pi r delta r into L. Okay. So if you put into the equation, this is almost the same as before. So we'll now try to get the equation. So what do you get? Two pi r L q r at surface r minus Two pi r l. It q r at this is the direction. Okay, this small in this. 
So heat flux in the direction of R at the surface R plus delta R in minus out plus 2 pi RL delta R into the source, right? Source is given as, okay, I will take care of this later. So SE equal to zero, right? Now, what do you have to do? Just divide by 2 pi, 2 pi delta, 2 pi L delta R okay, on the both sides. So what do you get? So you'll get R Q R at R minus R Q R at R plus delta R plus you're dividing by two pi L delta R and here you'll get R S C equal to zero. Okay, so if you rearrange this, you take this on the right hand side and rewrite, you will get R Q R R plus delta R minus R Q R R by delta R okay, equal to R S C. I take the limits. Limit delta r tends to zero. Then you'll get the differential equation, or you can say the derivative. So you'll get r. So d by d r r q r to r s c, right? So let's cross check. Yes, we have got this, right? Now you have to integrate it. Okay, so if you integrate it, you'll get something like this, okay? This QR is the heat flux, which is a function of radius. So now, so we have found the C1 constant of integration. Now you have to apply a boundary condition. So let's check it. So the Let's try putting R equal to zero. So at R equal to zero, that is the center of the wire, right? The way the energy, energy is getting produced. Yeah. So the flux, what will be the flux? If you put R equal to zero here, the QR is infinite, right? So heat flux cannot be infinite at the center because it is some kind of finite value is there, right? Because the energy production in the wire is limited. You cannot have infinite current producing infinite heat or infinite heating effect, right? So the flux has to be finite. So in this form, so the QR cannot be infinite. Definitely C1 has to be zero, okay? So at the center, we have in uh, finite flux, okay? Definitely QR is finite. So, so if you put R is equal to zero, you are getting QR infinite. That means the C1 has to be zero, okay? So this will give you QR is equal to SC R by two, okay? Now, you have to, if you want to get, so th th this is your flux profile, okay? That is linear, if you can see, is a is form of y is equal to mx, so linear form. So this is flux profile, okay? Now, if you want to get the temperature profile, so you have to put the Fourier's law, you know this, okay? So if you put this into this, so you'll get this, okay? Now again, integrate. So if you integrate, you'll get this. Okay, new constant of integration C2. So you can apply the boundary condition. So it is given that at the outer surface, at R is equal to R, the outer here, so the temperature is some T naught, okay? Surface temperature, it is given. 
So if you put here, so what you'll get? So, so you will get C2 is equal to something like this. Okay. And if you put the value of C2 here and rearrange, so you'll get this. Okay. So this is a temperature distribution inside the wire. Okay. This is what uh, you are asked to find. So if you can see this is R square, so it is parabolic with distance. Okay. So the profile is not drawn here, so you can draw it. So let's so the profile will be something like this. So let's say this is R, right? Zero to R. So this is radial distance. Okay, this is your flux. Okay, so if you can see here, so QR is as it's at center, QR is zero. Okay. And at the outer surface, it will be uh, SR by two. Okay, so it will, the flux will increase linearly. Okay. At R, it will be S E R by two. Okay, so it, this profile will be something like this. Okay, so, you can also draw the temperature profile with distance t. So at, cent uh, at center, r equal to zero, put r equal to zero here, this will be r, so it will become t is equal to t naught plus. So at here, something t naught plus scr square by 4k, right? k is the thermal conductivity, okay? So you can get you some value here. Okay. And at capital R, R equal to at the outer surface, R equal to capital R. So if you put R here, so it will be one, one minus one zero. So T is equal to T naught. So since it will be here, so let's say it is T naught will be lesser. So you'll get something like the parabolic, okay? Okay, so this is what you have got. Now, you might be asked to find the maximum temperature that is at the center because there is, the, there is some source of energy at the center, right? Because of the joule sitting effect. So just put R equal to zero, zero and you'll get the T max. Average temperature as earlier, you have to integrate over the small uh, area okay. so if you integrate you get this and if you want to find the heat flux about so it is surface area 2 pi rl into q r at r is equal to r so you can find out okay so this is how you find out the flux profile and temperature profile using shell energy balance okay. so in this problem you might have a doubt regarding this source, right? Why this is SE I square by KE, okay? So let me clear this. So it is given in the problem that SE source of energy production is I square by thermal conductivity. In this uh, book, this, this notation is followed, but if you study physics, so the current density is actually written by J, right? So J square and thermal conductivity is nothing but sigma. Okay, let's derive this. So th this has units of joule per meter cube second. So I'll show you how. Okay, so joule sitting effect H is equal to I square RT. Okay, time. Okay, so this is joule here. And this is the second, let's say. So let's take the time in this side. So h by t is equal to i square r. So h by t is now joule per second. Okay. Okay, so i square r. So i is current. Don't confuse with this i. This is current density as given in the book. But actually, this is the formula current density by the thermal conductivity. 
Oh, sorry, electrical conductivity sigma. Okay, so what is the resistance? The resistance formula is rho L by A, right? This is nothing but resistivity. This is the length of the wire. This is the area of cross section, right? This is given by resistance. So if you put here I square rho L by A, okay? And what is how the conductivity, electrical conductivity is related to the electrical resistivity? It is simply reciprocal of that. Okay, so you know this is one by sigma, right? So rho is nothing but one by sigma. Okay, so you can write uh, sigma comes down. Okay. Now you want to have current density. So what is current density? I by a. So I by a square. So you have to multiply and divide by area. So a square at the bottom, so you have to multiply the top by a, a into l, again, and sigma is there. Okay, so, so i by a is nothing but current density, j square, and a into l is nothing but volume, right? And we have sigma, that is electrical conductivity so we have so take the volume in this side so you have already have h by t h by t into volume okay so you get so we have h t volume time volume and you'll go j square by and this is nothing but written as sc what is the unit of SC? Joule per meter cube per second, right? This is how SC is written as I square by KE, right? You, you have got J square by sigma. I square is nothing but current density as given in the book. Okay, Sigma is nothing but electrical conductivity. Okay. Okay, this is how you solve the problem using cell energy balance. Okay. Let's solve another problem. So, next problem, we have heat conduction through composite walls. So, we have different blocks. Okay, so, you see here, we have different blocks. Okay, so, this, this block is of thermal conductivity K01. This block is of thermal conductivity K12. This block is of thermal conductivity K23. So we have three substances substance 1, substance 2, substance 3. Okay. Now, so this surface it is at temperature T0. Okay. And there is a fluid here with uh, some air is here with temperature Ta, ambient temperature. Okay. At this surface, the temperature is maintained as T0. Okay. And here at the other surface, the last surface, this temperature is T3. And there is a fluid like air and the temperature is Tb. Okay. The dimension of the block is like this width is w height is h okay so you can find the area as w h right so this is the direction of heat because higher to lower temperature so heat flux always happens through higher temperature to lower temperature okay so you are asked to find the temperature profile or flux profile how to find that Okay, also, so what would be the boundary condition in this case? So, you can see at x, okay, you have to also, uh, uh, you know, label this uh, on the x-axis. So, let's say this point is at x0, okay, this point is at x1, this point is x2, and this point is x3, okay. So x1 from x0 to x1, this is block 1, substance 1. x1 to x2, it is substance 2. x2 to x3, it is substance 3. Okay. Let's say 
the convective heat transfer coefficient is h naught here and here it is h3 see you have to use the boundary condition at this boundary we have according to newton's law of cooling what is the flux q is equal to and say q naught q is equal to h naught T A minus T naught. Okay, because T A is at higher temperature, and at this surface we have the flux Q three. Let's say Q three is equal to H three T three minus T V. Okay, so we are asked to find out the you know the uh, flux profile and the uh, temperature distribution. Okay, so basically, what are given is T A, T B, H naught, and H three are given. We are asked to find out all the temperatures or the temperature profile. So, how to approach this problem? So since this is a solid, so we'll go back to the first cell elements here. Okay. So in that problem, there is no, you know, the uh, energy is getting in and out only because of the molecular motion okay molecular motion of the substances okay there is no fluid inside that block okay so there will be no convective transport in this case also so this two will be zero only this two will be one again there is no work done on by the system right there is no change in internal energy okay. this term will be zero again no external forces working on the system so this will be zero and rate of energy production in this composite wall problem we don't have any rate of energy production so this is also zero so we are only left with this in minus out and what will be that that will be in only the x direction right so we go there okay so heat is only flowing to the direction x okay so we will only deal with the heat flux in the x direction so let's do the cell balance so here we just have to do uh, in minus out there is no n generation equal to zero so what is getting in q so heat flux in x direction at where at which surface x naught surface and it is getting out at which surface if you see it is x plus delta x okay how so we have to take a thin cell balance again here i skip that so So this was the problem. We have three blocks of different substances. So one, two, three. Okay. So they are arranged perfectly uh, in the x direction. So now I will take a thin cell. So the easiest way to take a thin cell is like so everything is in the rectangular system. So I will take a thin shell like this of the same. So you, you can say it is cuboid right so this in this one it is taking thin cell here see delta x okay in this direction okay so energy is getting in through at the surface x so I, I have taken any random distance at x and delta x and energy is going out at this point x plus delta x so energy is getting in at point x energy is getting out at x plus delta x just do the balance and we'll integrate and we'll apply the necessary boundary conditions. Let's say so. 
So in minus the out only by convection, there is no other convection or generation. Okay, so Q X at not X not. So it is at X actually. Because we are doing general cell balance, you can apply boundary conditions to find X not X one later. So first you have to do the general balance. So Q X at X plus delta X equal to zero. Okay, so one more thing you have to multiply with area, right? Because this is flux, and you have to uh, do the cell energy balance in the form of heat rate only, not heat flux. So you have to multiply with area. So what is what is the area? So this was the area, right? So this is nothing but W H. So you just multiply with W H. Okay, for both. So definitely this will go there zero. Okay. So multiply both sides with delta x. Okay. So if you both sides with delta x, so this will not make any sense. This will again be zero only. And take the limits. Delta x tends to zero. You will get minus d q x by dx equal to zero, right? So you can remove the minus. So you will get dqx by dx equal to zero. Right? So you have got this one. Okay. Now this is the general equation, but you have to integrate over different regions. So this is your Substance one. So this is the region from x naught to x one, from x one to x two, from x two to x three. These are the different regions. Okay, we have to integrate over different. So let's integrate. We have found the general equation. So integrate this from x naught to x one. So what do we get? So you have got d q x dx equal to zero. Right? So we have to integrate. So if you integrate it, nothing but zero. That means q x is constant, right? Let's say it is q naught. Okay. Again, if you integrate, uh, so you have uh, integrate from x naught to region one. That is x naught to x one. So we have got q naught constant again. Integrate for the region x one to x x two. This is region two. You again get you will get q x is equal to constant, right? Again integrate for region x two to x three. Then again you will get q x is equal to constant, right? So for all the regions. You have got q is equal, qx is equal to constant, right? That means qx is equal to q naught. So for all the regions, it is same. So to this whole point, we have flux qx is constant. That is some value q naught. So there is no change in the uh, heat flux. So heat flux is constant. Okay, heat will flow with uh, constant heat flux. Okay, so that's what you got. Okay, so for reason C, we have this. Okay, but if you, you know, put the Fourier law here and integrate again for different regions, you'll get different. So now let's integrate. So we have got q x is equal to q naught. So the flux profile is constant, right? So if you plot with distance, let's say this is zero, or let's say we have plot from x naught to okay, x naught is here. Let's say so if you plot from x naught to x three, so you get constant values. Okay, so this point, this point x one, x two, so you get this constant profile. Okay, that is q naught value. So let's try to find out the temperature profile now. 
So if you put the Fourier law here, you will get minus k d t by dx because temperature gradient exists in the x direction. Is q naught. Remember, this is k, right? So we are assuming k is constant. K is so k is constant. It is independent of the you know uh, direction only for isotropic materials. So k is constant means in this example, in this problem. We have taken isotropic materials. Okay, so so let's integrate this equation for reason one. Reason one was from so substance one or block one that is from x not to x one, right? So I will integrate this. So dt equal to q not dx minus q naught by k so i will integrate it so from t naught at the because at x is equal to x naught the t was temperature was t naught at x is equal to x1 the temperature was t1 as you can see from this diagram so this is t naught Okay. You can see this is at x is equal to x naught is t naught at x is equal to x one it is t one right. So in we are integrating in this region one. So what you will get? So you will get t one minus t naught equal to minus q naught by k x one minus x naught. Right, let's check. Okay, so this is what you have got, but so in the Fourier law, k was the sum of the of this substance, one, right? So it was denoted as k01, k12, and k22. So only you have to replace instead of k, you have to replace 01 for the reason 01. Or you can simply write k1, doesn't matter. Reason 1, 2, or reason 2, you can write k2. Reason 3, you can write k3 or k2. Right? So if you do the, you will get these three. You can apply boundary conditions that uh, if you see here. Yes. At x is equal to x naught, you can apply the Newton's law of cooling. Right? So what does what is that? So this is the thing. So Newton's law pulling is at the surface not it is nothing but h delta t right. So flux at this point by Newton's law of pulling. What is that? Newton's law of pulling is nothing but h delta t right. So for this point, what will be that? So let's say flux is q not because it is x0 is equal to it's already given h naught is given here so it's not convective heat transfer coefficient and delta t will be t a minus t naught t a minus t naught so you can easily write q naught so t a minus so q naught is nothing but h naught at surface zero, at T A minus zero, so it's rearranging T A is T A minus T naught is nothing but Q naught by H naught, right? So the main point is it is trying to you know write in terms of all the known values. So again at surface three, here if you apply the Newton's law of cooling, that will give you Q three is equal to H three T three minus T B, right? Okay, so this is what you got. So you have this first equation, this second, this third, this is fourth, this is fifth. So just add them all. Okay, so if you add them all, so what you'll get TA minus T naught. Okay, plus this. So if you add this, this will cancel, right? This will cancel. Okay, again we are adding this T3 minus Tb. 
So T3 will cancel. Here you are adding TA minus T0. So T0 will cancel. So only you are left with TA minus TV on the left hand side, right? And on the right hand side, you can just simply take the Q0 common, right? So Q0 common, 1 by H0 plus Q0 common, X1 minus X1 minus X0 by K1 or K01 and so on, right? And if you can solve it, so you'll get Q0 is equal to this. So this is the heat flux. Okay, so heat flux is constant. And what is the value? This value. So TA was given, TV was given, H0 is given, H3 was given. And you know thermal conductivity of the substance 1, substance 2, substance 3. So everything is known and the thickness is also known. So we can easily find out the this heat flux. Okay. So this is how you find the flux profile, heat flux profile. What about the temperature profile? So once you know this uh, profile, this heat flux profile, you can simply put Q0 here. Okay, so put Q0 here. You, you want to find the you know, temperature, uh, so, uh, so T0, let's say T0. So you can put Q0 here, so you can get it, okay. So in next class, we'll discuss the mass transfer. Okay. Thank you.